Before we jump directly into UV mapping some 3D objects, let's talk a minute about what is UV mapping and why do we need it. At its core, UV mapping is the process of creating a two-dimensional image of our three-dimensional object. It's like if you took a cereal box and strategically cut a couple of corners so that you could open up the box and lay it out flat on your kitchen counter. Then once it's flat, you could paint on it, draw on it, paste on some photographs or images to it, and then when you're all done, you could pick it up and assemble it back to a 3D object, to a box, and tape up the corners so it all holds together again. And that's kind of what we're doing with UV mapping. We're taking a 3D object, we're deciding where to cut it, we're laying it out flat so that we can then apply two-dimensional images. Now when you first open up Blender, you have a cube here, and it actually has a UV map on it. If I come over here to the UV editing tab, you can see that when we click on that, the cube switches to edit mode. And you can see over here, this is the UV editor. There's a flat representation of the cube here in this view. And as it turns out, every 3D object, every primitive mesh object here in Blender that you can create has a UV map attached to it or already created. So the purpose of this is to be able to export this, say, to Krita or GIMP or Photoshop and be able to paint or draw on it. We could add images or textures here in Blender. And whatever we put on this UV map here is going to appear on the faces here on this cube. So, okay, you may ask, why don't we just use this UV map? Why do we need to create our own? Well, the problem is, is that this UV map is just for this particular shape. Let's say we hit the three key to go to face mode and then clicked on this face here and hit E and extruded this up. Now let's hit the A key and select everything again. Even though the object has changed, we now have more faces, edges, vertices. Our UV map over here hasn't changed at all. So just because we change the object doesn't mean the UV map changes. So let's try this again. I'm going to tab back into object mode and hit the X key and delete this. And I'm going to press Shift A and go to Mesh Cube. And here we have a new cube. I'll tab back into edit mode and here we are back at that same UV map. So we can't just use the UV maps that come with the objects. Once we begin to change them, extrude, scale, add geometry to it, then we need to go back and UV map it so that it reflects the object the way it is. But how did they get this UV map? What process did they go through to create this? Well, first of all, what we can do is come over here to this UV maps area here under our object data panel. And this UV map layer holds all of these UVs. And we could come over here and just hit the remove UV map button and delete those. Now our object has no UV map associated with it. All right, so what can we do just from this here? If we press the U key on the keyboard, we get the UV mapping menu. And right up top, we've got unwrap. Let's give that a try. I'll click that, and this is what we get. And what it's done is it's taken each one of these faces and put them just one right on top of the other. Up here, we can switch between UV, edge, and face select mode. So if I just select UV and I click on one of these, let's say, and I hit G, you can see I can move this out and keep moving and keep moving. And we can begin spreading these out. And you can see how each face has been laid one over the other. And that's not really what we want because when we put a texture on one face, it will appear on all of them. So let's try something else. What I'll do is I'll hit the two key and I'll hit Alt A to deselect. And if we select a few edges, I'll say select this edge, this, and this. What we can do is we can add a seam. We can say to Blender, these selected edges should be seams or should be the edges we want to cut, just like that cereal box, so that we can open up the object and lay it flat. So we've selected these three edges. 
Now what we can do is press Control E, and that brings up the Edges menu. And in this menu, we've got Mark Seam. If I click this, you can see those selected edges now highlight kind of a reddish orange. So now let's hit the A key and select everything. And then let's hit U again and click that Unwrap. Okay, we've got a little bit different thing now. There's still some issues here. This doesn't look quite right, but it appears that we're being able to lay at least this part of the cube out flat the way we want. If I come over here and select this face right here, you can see that's the one there. If I then press Control I and invert the selection, all of these faces now are still being represented by this one object or this one shape. So what we can do is we could go back to edge mode and we could begin selecting a few more edges. What if we selected this edge and this edge? And uh, well, let's try this one and this one down here. So we've kind of created edges all the way around here. I'll press Control E and mark seam. You can see the seams there now. All right, so let's hit A, press U, and unwrap. Ah, now we're getting something a little closer to what we were after. All of the faces now have been laid out flat in a non-overlapping pattern. But how do we get that T-shape that we saw before with that other UV map? Well, we could take maybe one of these edges and we could remove this seam and move it somewhere else. Maybe let's press Control E, clear the seam here. Now you can see we don't have a seam there and maybe we could put a seam here. Let's try this, Control E and mark seam. Now let's press the A key to select everything over here. Even though our seams have changed, the map still stays the same because we haven't unwrapped it again. So now let's press U and unwrap again, and there we go. Now we can see we've got that T pattern the way we had from the default cube. But it's still not quite right. I'd like to turn it 90 degrees. So what let's do is over here in the UV editor, let's press the A key, and then let's just turn it by pressing R and typing in 90. Well, that didn't quite work. Now did it? <laughs> I'll hit the escape key. So let's try this. Let's try R negative nine zero. And there we go. Now we can press the G key and just move it up into place. And we have a UV map very similar to the one we had from the default cube. So that right there is generally how we're gonna create our UV maps. We're going to try and figure out where we can cut the 3D object using our seams tool. And we may have to do a little bit of experimentation. Try putting a seam here. No, that didn't work, and try again on another edge. But ultimately what we need to do through our UV mapping is really two important things. One, we need to create the UV map so that we can avoid stretching. And two, we need to be able to hide our seams when they would be distracting or break up our textures in a way that we don't want. So we need to hide the seams and avoid stretching. So what do I mean by avoiding stretching? Well, to see, we're gonna have to actually apply a texture. And let's go ahead and work on that now. I'm gonna tab back into object mode and I'm gonna come right up here to this corner of this window and click and drag to create a new window. We have our UV editing window here but I want to change this one from a UV editor here to a shader editor here. Now that we have this, I'm going to hit the N key to close that panel. And here in this node editor, we can actually apply our textures to our material for our object. Now one problem here is that if we go over to the materials panel, we can see we don't have a material for this object yet. If we click on the object, we can see our material panel is blank. We can click New here to create a new material. We can also click New over here. It's the same thing. So I'm going to go ahead and click New over here so that when I do, you can see what happens here. We get this shader node here and a material output node here. 
this shader node is reflected over here in the materials panel. And if we scroll in here, we can see these different sockets and we can attach different nodes to these various sockets. We're gonna use the base color here in this course probably the most, but now that we've created this material, let's go ahead and give it a new name. We can do that over here or over here. So we can call this, um, well, let's call this UV test pattern. That's gonna be the name of our material. And now we want to actually put a texture on this object so that we can see if we have any stretching in our UV map. To create a texture, we can here in the UV editor, create a new one by clicking new here and creating a new image. So I'll click new. And for this, let's call this um, UV test texture. And our size of 1024 by 1024 pixels is fine for now. But down here for the generated type, instead of blank, which would just give us a black image, let's click this and choose UV grid. And what that's gonna do is give us a black and white checker pattern so that we'll be able to see any stretching very easily on the object. All right, so I'll click OK, and here it is. So I'm gonna scroll out a bit. Here's our UV test texture that we're going to apply to our UV test pattern material. So let's come over here in the node editor and press Shift A. Let's go to texture and choose image texture. Here we go, and in this node, we want to add this texture. Well, we've already created the texture, so in this pull-down, we can see it here. And that's the same pull-down over here. So we can just choose it from the pull-down here, and then connect the color with the base color on the principled shader. Okay, so now we should be able to see it, but we can't yet. What we really need to do is just slide over and click on the look dev display. I'll click here, and there's our texture. So what do we have here? Well, what's going on, if I tab into edit mode again, what's going on is we're actually laying this checkerboard texture over our flat UV map. And when we're doing that, each of these faces are getting a certain amount of the texture here. So let me just make sure I'm in UV mode here, and I'm gonna select this UV and this UV right here. Let's now hit the G key and just drag this out and look at what happens. As I drag this further and further away, the checker pattern gets more and more squished. And if I hit the G key and move this in like this, let's say I just move it way into here, and we've only got, say, one, two and a half rows of squares here in this particular face. And you can see over here, we've just got one, two, and a half here as well. And let's say that this was a building, and we were putting a brick texture on this. And over on this side, we had the brick textures the way they were supposed to look, but over here, they were stretched way too much. This wouldn't be what we'd want out of our UV map. We'd want something where the texture is fairly consistent across the whole object. So even here, it's a little bit squished. If I pulled this back a little bit like this, there we go. So now we've got a more consistent texture throughout the object. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to avoid this kind of stretching that we see here so that our textures are applied more realistically or the way we want them to be. In addition to making sure we don't have our textures stretched when we're UV mapping, we also want to make sure we hide any unsightly seams from the viewer. A visible seam can sometimes give us a drastic break in the texture and be very distracting for the viewer. Well, we don't have to go too far to see a visible seam here. If we tab back into object mode, you can see that right here on this edge, We've got our texture up here with pretty much square black and white checkers, and then these here are squished, and right along this edge you can see that visible seam. Whereas if you look here, these two faces right here have a continuous part of the texture that doesn't break 
It's all the same size. It flows over the edge seamlessly. Let's go back and take a look at our UV map real quick and see where that is. So if I hit the two key to go to edge mode and select this edge. Now we can't see it currently, but if we come over here, right here to these two arrows, we can keep UV and edit mode in sync. So if I click this, now we can always see the UVs even if things over here aren't selected. And we can see where that edge that we've selected here is, right there. So with this edge, it's a smooth transition between one face and another on the texture. With this edge over here, of course, you can see these two selected here in the UV map are the same edge here. But of course, these two are wildly different. That's causing the difference in the texture from one face to the other. So this is the kind of thing we need to avoid. We need to avoid stretching and we need to avoid visible seams when they become distracting. Now if we tumble around over here, this seam over here may not be as distracting depending on the object we're dealing with. You can see here that this top part here and the, and the side here are the same size, the top here and the side, but they're off just a bit. You can see this square doesn't quite line up with this square. And depending on the texture, that may be okay. Maybe it's a, um, a stucco wall or an evenly painted piece of machinery, something like that, that this break in the texture wouldn't be that visible. So you have to consider what kind of texture is going to be going on the object to get a sense of whether or not a seam would work there. So what let's do is kind of put this all together, at least what we've talked about so far, and try and use that cereal box image that we had earlier to apply it to this object. We'll create a cereal box and see if we can apply those images, that label design, to our object here. So what let's do is let's go ahead and tab back into object mode. And I just want to change the shape of this. So I'm going to press S and Y and scale this in just a bit. And then maybe I'll press um, S and Z and scale this up just a bit. So we kind of get a cereal box kind of shape here. I'll go to the move tool and move it up. So it's just kind of sitting on the grid. And notice how as I've changed the shape of the object, the texture has stretched on it. And that's because if you recall, the UVs didn't change. They're still like this. Even though I changed the scale, the proportions of the object, the UVs are still the same. So of course, as you may have guessed, we're going to need to re-UV map this. Now, we can just go ahead and select everything and press U and unwrap. And there we go. But take a look at this. We've got some pretty serious stretching here. And up on the top and the bottom. But our UV map is still pretty even over here. It looks about the same. So how do we fix this? Well, the problem is, is our scale. And if we hit the N key to open up this panel here, and we need to tab back into object mode, we can look at our scale here and we can see that it's non-uniform. If we created a new object, let me just press Shift A and create another cube, and let me just move this to the side here. You can see that this cube, when it's first created, has a scale of 1, 1, and 1 in the X, Y, and Z. And that's a uniform scale. And when we UV map an object, Blender is looking at the object's scale to try and help it lay out the UV map. I'm going to hit X and delete that here. So what we really need to do is, now that we have our object in the shape that we want it, we need to apply the scale to get it back to a uniform state. And to do that, all we really have to do is just press Control A, and we can apply our transformations. Now, we can apply all the transformations, just the rotation and scale, the rotation, but all we really need is just scale. So let's just click that and take a look at this now. We've got all ones. All right, so now if we tab back into edit mode and hit the U key and unwrap, now look at what happens. The squares on our object are all square again, right? And that's what we want. 
that's good. And look at our UV map. It's now been reorganized to better represent our object the way it is now. And that's what we want. That's good. All right, we're on our way to texturing this cereal box. But now we need to talk about yet another issue, and that is texture resolution. How to try and use this 0 to 1 space, this square here, as efficiently as possible to get as much of the texture within our UVs as we can. Currently, the vast majority of this area, of this square here, has no UVs over it. We're not using this texture space very efficiently. Let's first begin by taking a look at the texture we're going to be using. If we take a look at this, we can see that we've got a continuous texture from the front to one of the sides here. And then we've got breaks. It looks like they've actually cut it apart completely here. And then we've got a continuous texture on the back to one of the sides as well. So I think I like my seams the way I'm going to break apart the object to reflect this so that we can get a continuous texture over that edge. All right, let's go back to Blender here. I think what let's do first of all is just clear all of our seams. I'm going to hit the A key and press Control E and then choose Clear Seam here. Now, as I'm working, I kind of feel like the checker pattern over here is getting in my way. It's hard for me to see the islands. So I'm going to go ahead and just hit the X here to remove that texture out of this view. And that's all it does is just remove it out of the view. It's still here attached to our material so we can see it in our 3D view. Okay, so I know I want to maintain this face and this face together, right? Since that's what our texture has. So what I think I'll do is go into Edge Mode with the 2 key, and I'm just going to select these edges all the way around that area, say right to here. And let's give this a seam. Control E, Mark Seams. There we go. And we can also do that back here as well. We had the back and one of the sides as a continuous texture as well. So let's go ahead and press Control E and Mark Seams here. Now let's see. I think we've got seams all the way around the bottom, seams all the way around the top. So those will be broken out separately as individual UV islands. And then we've got the front and the side and the back and the side as all one UV island. All right, so let's give it a try. I'll hit the A key, then I'll press U and unwrap. And there we go. So what I may do is just press the R key, and then I'm going to hold the control key down, and you can see in the upper left corner of this screen, of the UV Editor screen, you have the degrees of rotation, and I'm just going to hold the control key down until I get to 90 degrees and click. There we go. Now I can hit the G key and kind of move this in just a bit. Now we need to know if, if these are arranged properly. So I'm going to hit the 2 key to go to the edge select again, and if I select this edge right here, look at what happened. This edge is now turned on the bottom, so I need to flip this around. All right, so let's go to face select, and if I select this face, and I believe this face here, right? Yep, there we go. I can hit the R key and type in 180, and it'll spin it around, so R180, and enter. Now if I select this edge right up here, yeah, there it is there. Okay, let's try the same thing over here. I'm going to hit the 3 key to go to face mode, and this back here, and this here. It looks to me like these are in the proper place. If I hit the 2 key and select this edge, sure enough, it's here on the top. But these islands here are kind of in an awkward place. They're kind of it seems that this edge should really match up with this edge up here. So what I could do is go back to face mode, select this, move it up, hit the R key and control and turn it 90 degrees, and just maybe put it right up here like this, just so it's in place. And for the front, if this is our edge down here, yeah, you can see that this edge and this edge kind of go together. So. I'm just going to take this and move this over like this. 
that's not strictly necessary, but I just like to arrange things so I know what they are. I'm going to hit the A key, and then I'm going to hit the G key, and I'm going to move these into this 0 to 1 space. Hit the S key and maybe scale it down just a bit so that I'm sure that everything is in this square and is in this gray square. And you may wonder, why do I call this the 0 to 1 space? That's an important thing to talk about. So if I hit the N key, I can open up this panel here. We've got Image, Tool, and View. And here in the View, we've got something Cursor Location. And currently it's here at the bottom left-hand corner of this square. And its location, as if on a graph, is at 0, 0. Now, if I type in, say, 1 and 0, it moves over here. If I type in 1 and 1, it moves up here. And if I type in 0 and 1, it moves over here. So this is really just a graph. If I click on this button here, I can click and move this cursor around, and you can see the different coordinate locations for it as I do right over here. So if I put this back to 0 and 0, it goes right back here. So this is really just a coordinate space between 0 and 1. So it's often called the 0 to 1 space. All right, so we have broken up our 3D object into multiple flat planes and laid them out here in the UV editor. The next thing we need to do is actually apply that image, the image we saw here. So how do we do that? Well, what we're going to need to do is actually go into a paint program. I'm going to use Krita for this particular object, but you can use GIMP or Photoshop or Corel Painter, really just about any 2D paint program. Okay, well, we've managed to use our 0 to 1 space here, our texture resolution, a little bit more efficiently. We've increased the size of our UV islands to take up more of the space. Now what let's do is export this UV map out to Krita so we can apply our textures. To export this out, I'm going to hit the A key and select everything. And then I'm going to go to the UVs menu here and go to Export UV Layout. Now I'll put this in my Textures folder here. And if we come down here, uh, the size, we've got it currently at 1024 by 1024. And I happen to know that this particular image is only about 500 pixels big. So why don't we take our resolution down to something like 512 by 512, just so we aren't having to scale up our image to fit the UVs and therefore cause some pixelization. We've got the format here as PNG, and we've got the fill opacity at 0.25. Now, we're using a PNG because it automatically comes with an alpha channel, so we'll have transparency. We'll be able to see through it but the actual UV islands will have an opacity of 0.25. So we'll be able to see through them, but they'll be slightly more opaque. All right, let's give this a name. Let's call this uh, Serial Box UVs. There we go, and export. All right, so let's go over to Krita and take a look at it. I've gone ahead and opened up Krita and then opened up our Serial Box image here that we're going to use. A couple of things that I've done here in the Krita interface is I've gone to Windows and Workspace, and I'm using the default workspace here. In addition, in here, I'll click in here and press Shift-S, and that'll bring up the Snap menu. And I've turned off everything. You might see um, Image Center or Image Bounds checked. It's just easier for what we're going to do if we uncheck everything here. All right, let's bring in our UV map. Let's go to File, uh, Open, and here it is, our Serial Box UVs. And I'll click Open, and there it is. So you can see how that fill opacity at 0.25 gave us this kind of shaded view of the UVs. Over here in the Layers panel, I'll click on this and just type in UVs so we know what that is. So now what we can do is come over here to the Fruit Loops tab here to our Serial Box. And if I click on the rectangular selection tool right here, I can just click and drag a selection right here. It looks like I got a little bit of the black in here. I'm going to press Control-Shift-A to deselect. You can also come up here to select and choose deselect here. 
But I'm going to try that again. I didn't get that quite right. There we go. That's a little bit better. And I'm going to go ahead and select all of this, including that side panel as well, right there. All right. Let's press Control C. And then let's go back to the UVs and let's press Control V. And there it is. All right. So now we need to fit it into this panel right over here. Remember, this is the front. So I'm going to come over and turn on the transform tool right here. And I'm also going to take this layer and drag it down underneath the UVs. So we're seeing that image underneath the UV area here. With that layer selected, I'm going to click on it to turn on that tool. And I'll just move this over here like this, kind of covering up those black lines. And I'll click here and drag down and try and stretch it down just a little bit like this. There we go. All right, let's do that again. I'll come over here to the cereal box image. I'll press Control Shift A to deselect. I'll grab the back of the box right here and that side right there. Press Control C. Go to my UVs, Control V to paste. Make sure I'm in my transform tool over here. Click on it and let's move it over here into place. And I'll just grab this corner and kind of stretch it down just a bit. Kind of like that. There we go. I can press Enter. It looks like I've got it a little bit too low down here. I'm going to pull it back just a little bit like this and hit Enter again. All right, now let's uh, work on the tops here. Maybe I'll go back over here and I'll press Control Shift A again to deselect. And for the top, let's. Um, Let's grab this area right up here, right there, let's say. There we go, Control C, Control V, and I'll just drag this over. This will be the top of the box like this, and I'm just gonna grab the corner and stretch it out to fit the UV island. And then over here, Control Shift A, and let's grab this down here on the bottom like this, right here. All right, control C, control V, click, and let's drag it over here, and then stretch it out to fit the UVs. There we go. I'll hit enter, and then I'll come over here and hide the UVs layer. We don't want to export that out again. That was just a template, just a guide to tell us where to put the images. So I'll just hide that layer right here. And now there's our UV map. One more thing I usually do in something like this is I add a black background. So I'm going to come over here and create a new layer. Just click here and I'll drag this down to the bottom. Let's call this uh, background. There we go. And let's um, come over here to the fill tool. I'll click that. And in the color selector over here, I'll just click and drag all the way up to black. Now I can come over here and click in an open area, and it'll fill that with black. All right, I think we're ready. Let's export this out and see how it looks in Blender. I'll go to File, Export, and let's call this Serial Box, um, let's call this COL for Color Map and save. I'll click OK. And there we go. Let's go back to Blender. Now here in Blender, all we really need to do is just replace this test texture, our UV test pattern, with the actual image that we want to bring in. So I'll go ahead and just click the X here and get rid of that. And then let's click Open and browse to our Textures folder. And here is that Serial box col. If I click on this icon here, we can see it. Let's select it, click open, and there it is. There is our serial box. I'll tab back into object mode, and yeah, that's looking pretty good. So you can see what I've done here. I've just ensured that this corner here has that continuous texture on it, 
and I've ensured that this corner here has that continuous texture. The seams here where it isn't continuous isn't too bad because the images or the texture has a natural break there. But you can see from this example how you can keep in mind what textures need to be continuous and what can be broken up by seams, as well as making sure that your UV map uses the zero to one space fairly efficiently.